we're going to go back in time to ancient Roman civilization and do a fun activity on aqueducts and irrigation system. In this on hands project, students will learn more about the infrastructure of the ancient Roman civilization. Students will construct a model of the Roman aqueduct used to provide irrigation to the land and city. The design of the aqueduct and irrigation system will involve the use of straws, popsicle sticks, and other basic classroom items. The students will learn how science played a role in the construction of the aqueduct. The students will assess the significance of the irrigation system on the Roman civilization. And finally, the students will understand why these systems positively impacted humans and the environment. Goals of this project. Construct an aqueduct and irrigation system. Observe how water flows in an aqueduct. Investigate how engineering utilizes gravity and slopes to build an irrigation system. Recognize the connection between aqueducts and irrigation systems. And recognize the significance and longstanding of the Roman aqueduct system. Let's highlight the importance of Roman aqueducts. For those that didn't know, control of water sources is a symbol of power. Until this day, there's still 2,000-year-old Roman aqueducts standing across Europe, Africa, and Asia. The thing about water is that it can make places look much more attractive. As you can see here, the Romans were actually able to use that water to make beautiful fountains and gardens. Finally, Romans diverted water for vital purposes, such as bathing, drinking, and farming. Romans wouldn't really be able to support the large populations and their civilization wouldn't grow. So it was very important for them to have control of water. Many lands in Europe to Africa to even Asia were controlled by the Romans. But in order to have control of these lands, they have to have control of the water. Reasons to that is that they have to support the masses this importance of the Roman irrigation system, let's talk about how it worked. To get started, I'm going to show how Romans utilized slope and gravity in their pipes. The pool noodle will act as the pipe and the ball of Play-Doh acts as the water. The Play-Doh is able to roll down the pool noodle because it is at a slope and is able to travel with the help of gravity. Now, let's get into the materials needed for the project. The materials needed for this demonstration include one pool noodle, scissors, and some Play-Doh or air dry clay. Step one, cut the pool noodle in half. Step two, we are going to cut the pool noodle from top to bottom and we will show you on the next slide how it will look. Step 3. This is how the pool noodle will look to carry out the demonstration. Step 4. Make a ball using Play-Doh or clay. Step 5. Hold the pool noodle flat and check to see if the ball will roll. Step 6. Now hold the pool noodle at a slope and check to see if the ball will roll. Now that we have tested how slope and gravity allow for water to travel downstream, we will now explain gravity a little more. Well, gravity is an invisible force that pulls an object toward the center of the earth. An object with weight has gravity. That is why the water is able to travel downwards on a slope, because the water with the weight is trying to get to the lowest surface of the earth where there are no barriers that prevent it from traveling. We just discussed gravity, now let's discuss the Roman arches. The Roman arches allowed to build long bridges. The design allowed for the building blocks to rely on each other and gravity for support. These bridges were normally built on a slope so that the water could travel without the use of pumps. This was very important for Roman civilization as water is an important resource for our everyday lives. 
We needed to drink, shower, cook, and grow our food. This was an efficient way to reach the people of the empire. Now that we have discussed the Roman arches and bridges a little more in depth, we will now ask a few important questions on the following slide to think a little more deeply on the importance of Roman aqueducts. Here's a question for students to consider. What would happen if we did not have this water system? Also, in what ways would civilization and people suffer? Next, we are going to cover building the aqueduct. So, for the materials, you will need one pair of scissors, two boba straws, a few popsicle sticks, a handful of beads, one paper cup, one small paper plastic bowl, and a tub of air dry clay or Play Doh. In addition to this, you will need one hot glue gun station alongside the, the glue sticks and gloves. Make sure your hot glue gun is on low temperature for the safety of everybody. For step one, create two mounds of clay, one tall and one short. of the paper cup. Step two, cut a small triangle on the edge of the paper cup and the paper cup bowl. This is so that the straw can situate on it. Step three, in using the low temperature hot glue gun, you'll want to, to glue both boba straws together in a straight line and make them nice and straight. So using the straw, place it securely on the, on the Play-Doh and place it in between the, the cut opening in both the straw, I mean the bowl, and the cup so that it can be held securely at a slope. With a ruler, measure the, the popsicle sticks and make sure each half is smaller than the other. In order to, to cut the straws, I would recommend using scissors instead of just breaking them in half it creates a cleaner cut. Then you'll want to hot you'll want to hot glue gun the bottom of the boba straws to the rounded part of the cut popsicle sticks. Now you have a functioning basic model of an aqueduct. The, the popsicle sticks simulate the rounded arches of the aqueduct as well. Finally, 
family, take a few marbles and place them inside the boba straw and watch them roll down, simulating water. If you would like to include an enhanced version of this project, you could use water as well. I would suggest getting a tub just to keep the water contained. And you can use, use blue dye to simulate the visuals of the water, and you can pour it down the boba straw and watch how it's transported from the top of the slope to the base. How can you improve your aqueduct design? So you can change different variables. For example, you could change the slope. You can make it steeper or less steep. You could change the straw quantity. Um, you might want to do that if you want to reach multiple houses. So at this and this particular design, you're only reaching one bowl or one house or one fountain. But in a real Roman civilization, you would reach multiple locations. So how could you simulate that? So you could try adding straws and making a larger city structure. You could add more arch bridges to create a stronger design. You could even create curved and longer aqueducts, connect systems together. So there's many things you can do with this design to make it um, better and more useful. So in conclusion, the aqueducts changed Roman society forever. The Romans were able to divert water from far distances and able to pro provide food, drinking water, and joy in terms of beauty, and, and fountains and gardens to their people. The Romans were able to control vast amounts of land and increase their empire as well due to this control of water. Water ultimately is power. And a further conclusion to make from the Roman civilization aqueducts is that we have been inspired by these ancient technologies. Even in our modern day, we still utilize aqueducts. For example, in this photograph, you can see the Los, this, um, the Los Angeles aqueduct. It was built in 1913 and is still used today. These engineering principles we, from the ancient civilizations we have just built upon and have improved. Our lives are absolutely influenced by our ancient ancestors.